Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a music teacher. I currently teach piano and voice in a studio setting. One of the benefits of learning in a studio setting is the concentrated one-on-one -on -one focus between the student and the teacher. Unfortunately, most students only have one lesson a week for 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour at most. The other six days out of the week, they're expected to go home and practice everything the teacher taught them in the lesson. Don't forget to pedal. Are you counting? Make sure you're holding this note long enough. Hold your hands like that. Don't forget to do this over there, etc. Chances are, by the time the student has gotten home to their piano and sat down to practice, they have forgotten nearly everything their teacher told them about the specific way to practice a piece or a certain concept. My goal is to bridge that gap between studio learning by creating a video for my students to practice at home, essentially bringing me into their practice sessions with them. We're going to start out with what I hope is an easy win, a confidence booster for both of us as we do this together. Our first video practice is going to be an improv duet. Some people are intimidated by improv because they feel that there aren't enough guidelines to make them feel comfortable. Because everything you play in an improv is your own creativity, your own ideas, your own musical thoughts. Just remember, as long as you follow a few rules in improv, what you play won't sound wrong. Everything you play will sound great. And in the end, it will be a confidence booster for you. The duet that we're gonna to improvise today is going to be using only black keys. We're going to be using G flat, A flat, B flat, D flat, and E flat. If you're looking at your piano keys, you'll notice that I've just listed for you every single black key on the piano. So essentially, if you play a black key in this duet, it won't sound bad. No matter what black key you play, it will sound great with what I'm playing in the bottom. As you're improvising, just do one note at a time. Don't try to play multiple notes. Don't play any blocked notes. Everything is just going to be single notes for right now. Because this is a duet, you want to make sure that you're listening to the other person's part and allowing the mood that they're creating, the mood that I'm creating at the bottom to help influence the way that you're choosing the speed of your notes or the patterns in your notes. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right on in. I'm gonna start by playing the first measure of four beats by myself to set the tempo and kind of give you a little idea of the mood of this improv duet. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Jump in when you're ready. Get ready to end on a G flat. And here we go on a G flat. How did you do? Whether you feel like you're ready for a concert hall or you feel like you kind of messed it up, the fact that you did it, the fact that you went outside your comfort zone and tried something new is creative and that's great. So let's do it again. Let's build upon what we just have done and let's take it to the next level of musicality. Let's think through some things that can make it even more musical and broaden our understanding of, these, of this idea through this learning experience. So though I demonstrated the notes you were allowed to play, 
in the middle of the piano, don't feel like you're stuck to that octave. You have many more octaves you could be using. So you can move around up here. You can even go to the top of the piano if that's the sound that you're going for in your improv. Just because I'm playing my chords in the bass doesn't mean that you can't take your melody down there since we're on two different pianos. Just remember that as you get lower into the bass notes, things get pretty muddy down there. So keep that in mind as you're playing your improv if you choose to venture into bass territory. The next thing I want you to think about is using more than one note at a time. I know when we first did the improv together, I encouraged you to only play single notes, but that was really just to get your feet wet. Now that you have a sense of where the mood is going, where the song is moving, and how you want to move with it, I want you to think about creating more musicality in your sound by adding multiple notes. You don't have to play multiple notes the entire time, but throw some in there. See what it sounds like if you play some skips. Or if you prefer fourths, you can do that too. Try octaves. And you'll sound like Mulan. Another thing that you can try to add into this time around in your improv is changing up your rhythms. You can play some long held notes but you can also mix that up with some faster notes. So do some fast notes, do some long notes. Don't think through the technicality of, okay, I'm gonna play a whole note now, and then I'm gonna play some quarter notes. Just kind of how it is moving you, how you feel the music is going. Throw some fast ones in there, throw some long ones in there. And then last but not least, add your pedal. That with pedal sounds better than raises the bar of the musicality. So keep those things in mind as we improv a second time through. Add your pedal. Don't stick to the same octave. Try adding more than one note at a time. And of course I forgot the, the fourth one. Change your rhythms. Don't forget to change up your rhythms. So let's try it again. Once again I am going to play a measure of four beats, counting it out to set the tempo and give you a feel for where we're heading with this. Here we go.
back knee, except for chin flat. Here we are, almost at the end, and end. Great. So did your song sound finished? In forcing you to end on a note other than G flat, I almost on purpose made your song sound unfinished. Because the duet that we played was in the key of G flat, G flat is the home note. It is the note that the song sounds most at home. So by not ending on G flat, we've created an unfinished sound. If you chose to end on a B flat or a D flat, your song probably sounded almost finished because B flat and D flat are also in a G flat chord. And any note in that chord is going to make the song sound fairly finished. G flat is just the one that has the strongest finished sound. If you ended on an A flat or an E flat, those two notes aren't in the G flat chord or the home chord. So your song probably didn't sound finished. And your ear probably told you, uh, hey, wait, don't you need to play one more note? If you ended on an A flat, your ear probably wanted you to go lower and end on the G flat. And if you ended on the, a, on the E flat, your ear was probably telling you to go lower and play the D flat or to go higher and play the G flat. I hope that you enjoyed this improv duet. I hope it helped improve your practice time and give you a little extra confidence in trying improv with me. I would love to hear what you created. Come back to this video throughout the week. Try building upon the ideas that you've already done and try expanding on ideas that we haven't talked about today, but thinking through some of the other things that we have talked about in some of our other lessons together. The ideas for this video were not original to me. They are compliments of Forrest Kinney's book called Pattern Play, book number one.